Saturday's uh, scrimmage when you saw the film? Saturday's scrimmage. Um, I am so far past Saturday's scrimmage. Were we on Tuesday here? <laughs> um, I saw improvement. Um, I thought our offense protected the ball better. Uh, I thought there was definitely improvements across the board. Um, got a lot of plays. We had probably 130-some plays. So a lot of guys got some good work. Um, I wish we could do that about every other day because that's really what we need. Um, but we did see some improvement. I know there's been an aspect about you guys trying to manufacture energy, like kind of create that road experience or uh, a way. Um, how's that been? Well, yeah, not so much even for the road. Just we're not going to get much down in practice unless they come out here with really good energy. I mean, we might as well just go back in if we're just – you know, we talked to them a lot of times about, um, you know, you can come out here and get sweaty and uh, get your heart rate up a lot and not get any, any better. The only way we're going to get better is if there's tremendous energy and focus. you got to have the energy to bring the focus. I mean, it's just nothing, our belief is nothing, you know, will ever be accomplished great in life. With, you pick it without great focus and energy. Football as well. Obviously, the biggest question mark here at fall camp for you, everyone's talking about, you finally joined Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. I'm still, first of all, Twitter, Twitter is not for you guys. <laughs> it is for, hey, it's for the recruits. You know, I think when Facebook came out, I said, what, what Facebook? No one's going to do that. And then when I heard about Twitter, I don't know how many years ago, I was like, well, that, that's not a good idea. No one's going to do right. that. So I'm still behind the times. It always had to do with recruiting. Right. And so that's the best way for us to communicate with those guys, and that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. You thought about crafting your first tweet or what that's going to look like? I don't think it's going to be. I don't know if I'll have a tweet out there. It's that direct communication. Okay. What do you think is better about communicating via Twitter than text or Facebook or whatever? Well, if we could text them, I, mean, I, I, can, I can do that. That's kind of my world. I'm good there, but we can't text them. Uh, Facebook, about half of them seem to be on it, half of them aren't. Twitter, it seems like about 90% of them or more are on Twitter. And so that's the best way to communicate. i gotta, I got to try hard to keep up with the times. <laughs> I'm trying. Does that kind of fit in with your mantra and just kind of keep it short and sweet and don't have to really elaborate <laughs> yeah, too much? Yeah, you know, I mean, again, it's just it, it always comes back for those type of things with, uh, you know, recruiting and communicating to those guys. I mean, like I said, Facebook was the way, but I've never Facebooked one person if they weren't 18, 19, 20-year-old, uh, that had to do with, you know, football. So for the tight ends group, you guys have a lot of athletic guys there. Can you just talk about what you're seeing out of them so far in camp? Yeah, uh, I, think they're, I think they're making progress. I think it's a pretty good group. Um, I think it's, it's like, I think we talked about this early in camp. I think that's a hard, that's a hard position. You know, it's such a physical position. you got to play like an old lineman. you got to run like a receiver. And then mentally there's a lot on their plate. And uh, I, always, I, I always have tremendous respect for those tight ends. I kind of think they're the unsung heroes on the offense. Um, and I think they're making progress and they're working hard. In terms of it's like starter, will there be one main guy or are you going to kind of mix that up, same with kind of the running backs? Yeah, that'll, that'll, style? that'll be done by committee. Okay. Um, and uh, I think the thing that I worry about is it's such a physical position. I hope we've got enough guys there, you know, that we can hold up. Mm -hmm. And so I know it's not going to be one or two guys. We're, we're going to need all hands on deck there. Who are your most physical guys right now at that position? Um, you know, I think they're all doing a good job being physical. Um, you know, you'd probably have to ask Coach Pow Pow that uh, in terms of, I think they've all caught my attention. Uh, we need to be more consistent um, across the board, but I think they're all pretty physical guys. And some shuffling on the offensive line as well, and I think that's what, talking to Coach Strasser, I mean, he likes that competition. He wants guys pushing each other, particularly with the great depth you guys have yeah. there. I mean, what have you seen, and particularly at, at center, you got a couple veteran guys who are yeah. um, battling that out. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a great position to be in to, to have some guys that play a lot that are very close to you know keep that competition going. And I love it. I wish we had that across the board, and we do. I mean, we got some young guys in the secondary that are going to show up there, and so it's competition across the board. I think it's awesome when you know sometimes when you get that uh, a veteran group. Sometimes there's not competitions like, well, these, these guys got it. Well, that's not necessarily the case at that position. So it's really good. I think it's healthy. I think it's for, for healthy for the two guys that are – two, four guys that are competing. I mean, they're going to get better. They know they have to. When it comes to establishing that hierarchy of running back, how much of it is what you see in practice this month and then how much is just when the, the actual games, when they're actually being tackled and yeah. over the ground, that kind of thing? So I kind of say we, you know, we got a little bit of a seating chart around here at certain positions. Um, I mean, you got you got to get you got to get started somehow, some way. We will the first game, and 
certain guys maybe have uh, been consistent in practice and when we scrimmage showed up maybe a little bit more, but I know we're going to need them all and they're all going to get an opportunity. And then when the games play, those that stay healthy, uh, those that produce, you know, we're going to get more carries. We have a, you know, a big sign in, the, um, in our training. Durability, more important than ability. And I believe that's certainly at that position. I mean, you can have all the ability in the world, but if you're not out there for us, and that's a tough, physical, hard position to stay healthy at. Where, where has LeVon Coleman impressed you so far? Where, what areas of his game does he kind of add? I think he's a physical running back. Um, he did a great job in spring, and um, I'm anxious to see him play real football, real college football. Do you have an idea who would get the first carry? I do Game not. You know, I mean, I think it's interesting. I, I know how, how much the media is always in the depth chart. <laughs> I don't ever even ask that out of our guys. We talk about our guys, and we got to have not only the first guys ready, I think about the second guys just as much. I could care less who gets the first carry. I really could, and I don't care who starts a right guard either. I know our coaches will put the best guys that we think deserve it, go from there and keep evaluating. So. Just so you know, as the season goes on and you see a little change, I mean, I know everyone, where's the depth? That doesn't mean anything to me. Do you guys anticipate putting on the depth chart before next week? I think we will. I think okay. when we have to, we put one out. <laughs> they don't have that. Do yeah. you want. Yeah. All your guys at that position seem to have good hands, too. Is that, I mean, is that something that you obviously look for? Well, we'd like to throw, you know, those guys are pretty athletic, pretty strong guys, and if we can get them out in space and get them the ball, it doesn't really matter if we give it to them behind mm -hmm. the quarterback or you know, out in space, we'll do whatever we got to do to get our playmakers on the ball. How important is athleticism in your offense? You talk about the tight ends being athletic, quarterback kind of has to be athletic now in the modern college day. Is that? I think it's everything. I mean, I, I mean, that's what it is. The game of space and spread them out and let your athletes go. And hopefully, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, you're trying to teach fundamentals and coach technique. But, you know, really, if I got a bunch better athletes than you got, I got a better chance of stopping people and scoring points. Are Jeff and Troy going to maybe get a few more of the reps as the week progresses and you get into next week? Yeah. Is that, or is that, has that already started? Yeah, what are we here? No, not not quite, but we're getting close. Uh, yeah, we'll have to get those guys some more reps, and uh, and that's uh, coming soon. Chris, when you have a few position battles with a number of different guys, you talked about the seating chart. Is that is that a, a technique or, or a philosophy that allows you to kind of keep those guys engaged and, and feeling like they've got an opportunity? Does that kind of help you? I would hope so. Um, I just think it, it, it's not fair to these kids that are busting their tail. I mean, even once the season starts, even a guy that goes on scout team, that if he's doing a good we, we've had this, I think every year, a guy that's played scout team that has done a tremendous job that we're not going to redshirt, that we've then figured out a way to get that guy in the game. I mean, I think that's just, I mean, that's what practice is all about. I mean, we want to have guys feel like they got a chance, and I, we're evaluating at all times. And when we can do that, we like that. And so not only is the competition good, just for guys working and getting better, it's our job and responsibility as coaches to see that and give those guys an opportunity. I think it, I think it helps us grow as the season goes on. And, then, and how quickly will you make any decisions on scholarship guys if, if they're walk-ons that, that have earned that right? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's in, we're, we're kind of in that process of figuring out, uh, you know, what we have and if there's a guy that, too, that deserved to, to, to go on. Um, we're we're kind of in that process the next couple of days. You know, we meet with all of our guys and kind of have a heart-to-heart -heart and, hey, this is where we see your role and, you know, where we go from now. You obviously don't have to make redshirt decisions at, at any point early, but are there any freshmen aside from Buda Baker who you think certainly will play who you are counting on? Well, um, yeah, and there's probably, I don't know, I don't know what the count is. I mean, five to six, seven guys, maybe they're going to go. And so probably in the next three days, you know, we'll have some decision on some guys for sure. But I also know there's going to be, uh, you know, a couple guys that we're going to say, hey, you know, game three, game four, you're, you're still got to stay with us. You're still alive in case injuries or you keep developing and you keep become better than the guys we got out there. We, we've kind of learned that over the years. I and mean, you can't say, okay, you're red shirt. As soon as you say that early on, that guy ends up playing right away because uh, – I don't know why <laughs> football gods come and get you when you make those decisions too early. Can you believe that you're just like a week and a half away from Hawaii? Uh, how's it feeling? How, how's the team feeling? Yeah, we haven't uh, – I don't know if anybody's thinking that we're that close. I know these guys aren't. I think they're kind of still in the middle of the dog days. And uh, even the coaches, you know, it's kind of one day at a time. I think everybody's done a good job of that, of just one day at a time. And um, 
but but we're getting close. You know, we're getting close to okay. Here comes the game plan. This is what it's going to look like, and uh, and then I think it'll hit everybody. Yeah, but by the end of the week, you hope to start installing some of that, or is that oh yeah a little bit already is yeah. Started, or? And so they may. It's not going to. We go into game week. It's not going to be a whole new set of things. They've right. already been okay. getting these plays that we we know we're going to run anyways. Uh, there may be a tweak or two, but I don't, it's not going to be real smart on us to come up with a whole new plays I haven't seen that we've been working on camp. So, you know, we'll, we'll put it together and you know package them in this part of the game plan. We want these plays here, but they're going to have seen ninety eight percent of them already.